Okay guys, we're here on a dock and we wanted to take the time today to put out a long format video of how to switch out a gym remote to a Premier remote. So basically, <clears throat> this is a GA, GA, GR2A, GR -A, which is an auto run gym box. And uh, we're gonna just walk you through how to replace it. So first take off the cover and what I'm gonna do here, Bobby, is first I'm gonna check the voltage. We wanna make sure that we have the power turned off to the unit. Just a moment here. All right, currently we're reading 240 volts. So I'm gonna locate the breaker to turn this box off. Just the most important thing, we wanna make sure we work safe and we de-energize the box. So now I've got zero voltage, so we're safe to proceed. Perfect. I'm gonna disconnect the gym ribbon from their small PCB board that's on the inside. Looking here, just notating, looking at a couple of things, I'm um, able to realize that, and we verify that it was wire 240. We've got both of our L1 and L2 here. Looking down on the bottom, uh, it was, or neutral was provided. We've got our grounds here all tied together. We've got our limit switch wire. We've got motor number two, wire nutted here together off of the pigtail that's coming off of the bottom contactor. And then we've got the motor one is connected directly to the contactor. I'm gonna start just by removing or loosening the screws on the right side of the lower contactor. And ultimately, I mean, this all may look intense if this is for a homeowner, but um, you're basically unconnecting all of the wires that are coming through this bottom loom, which would be the power wires, the limit switch wires, and the motor wires. And uh, you would just unscrew those right. from these contactors. And it's here. interesting. They have they've this this particular installation. Um, I've got the white wire in here that was connected and tied to the neutrals, but it's not being utilized. Um, but I'll show you how we're going to take care of that as well. Close here, just a few more wires to disconnect. I'm gonna go ahead and move these two from the right side. I've got one more neutral to remove from the incoming power. And I'm going to take the wire nuts off of the wires going to motor two, separate them. All right, so now all my motors are disconnected. I'm going to do my grounds next. And then lastly, we're going, we're going to disconnect our limit switch wire. This one's a little abnormal. Normally you would see you've got the three limit switch wires that are running back to the control units. This are standard black, blue, and red. Um, here, for the, the previous installer, um, they had to use a length of wire between the limit switch and the control box. Um, and they chose wire that had insulated a green black and white because the distance from the limit switch on this dock is probably about 50 60 foot away from from the control unit so all i want to do here is i just want to make sure i'm noting to myself that hey green is tied to the blue black is to the black and then white is to the red so we're going to go ahead and disconnect these normally what you would see in this situation your incoming limit switch wires so normally this wire here it would have the same colors yes you're red, just matching blue colors yeah <clears throat> then when we get the premiere box we'll show you how those go into our limit switch connector I'll separate all these so now we've got everything separated um, and if we just simply kind of peel everything back we've got 
we've got our looking at the bottom of the box we've got our limit switch wires that are coming in we've got motor motor wire here mm -hmm. we've got motor wire wires here and then we've got our incoming power wires and those are the those are the four wires or four sets of wires that are coming in the bottom of the unit next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and start loosening up the lock nuts or castle nuts or ring nuts whatever you want to call them yeah, so there's the these nuts here, 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 that you're going to use a screwdriver and yeah, tap just... and just try to unscrew them. And basically what that's doing is releasing them from the looms and connectors down here. Sometimes they can be a little rusty or crusty, but give them a little tap with a hammer or so and you'll be okay. Feel free to stop the video anytime you guys are rolling through this and you continue on. But after these nuts, we'll basically work towards taking off this box. And then we have our new box sitting around here, which we'll be installing. Okay, what I'm doing here, you're just gonna start seeing me pull all the wires from the bottom that we disconnected and, and loosened the liquid tight connectors. I'm gonna pull all these loose. And now with all the wires, the incoming yeah. wires removed. Show now them just... maybe one more time what each one of those are. So yeah, now hang. that we've got, we've got these pulled out, the ones here with the colors, we've got one of the motors, we've got motor two, we've got our incoming power wires the blacks l1 l2 whites the neutral green is ground and then finally we have the three wires for the limit switch just so once it's out of the box it looks a lot easier what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna secure faceplate back on just so that it's out of our way for removal Got a little helper coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over here to the... We do suggest, and what we're removing here, these screws, they are stainless. We do suggest the installation or any installation to use stainless hardware. It's a lot better. And after those four screws are taken off, the gym box can be removed. Yep, so we'll set that aside. And we also want to note a lot of customers have either their own uh, plate that they've mounted, maybe something stainless or aluminum uh, in this situation. He's painted this, so we want to make uh, maybe an easy um, access to the screws so the customer can take it off or paint. Or in a perfect situation, we would paint this for him, come back and, and tighten it up. But for now, we're just going to install the box as is. So right now, we're kind of measuring up to see where the bottom of our box will live with the amount of cable provided. Um, <clears throat> obviously, it's going to be a smaller box. Mm -hmm. So it'll be more here instead of the that's whole right. Thing. That's right, Bobby. It's going to be sitting right here. And what I was doing right at that moment, right when you were speaking, was really trying to look at these cables, see how long they were, look at my orientation in the bottom of my Premier Remote. Uh, it does come pre-supplied with four knockouts that are evenly spaced for four half-inch liquid connectors. Um, there's times some of the installations you may have to enlarge one of these half inch knockouts to a three quarter using a unibit or something like that. And this installation 
this is really straightforward everything is half inch and what i'm going to do because the cables are coming from we'll call this the left hand side of the box i'm going to use these two on the left hand and then i'm going to leave the one that's already open on the right hand side we'll leave it out so what i'm going to do next is take this apart we'll get our knockouts knocked out and then we'll be ready to install the box yeah so basically we don't want to go crazy and crisscross all these and and if you look at the bottom of the gym box we really tried to create a direct replacement and so you can see these three in a line and so we'll do the best we can lining up these holes just as they came so what i'm doing i'm just taking this faceplate off just to move this and get this out of our way set it to the side it does come with a they supply it with a or we supply it with a with a uh, flathead screwdriver the security security torx bit does come with a fitting for the limit switch wire if you don't have one and also a jumper for a 120 volt application we're not going to be using that today because this box is wired 240 volts all right so as i mentioned we're gonna we're gonna knock these knockouts and this is a polymer box so you've got to hit it with a little authority but if you just follow the um follow it around here and what I'm doing I'm just taking a flathead screwdriver and a pair of linesmen's and just knocking knocking the knockout out one, one done move on to number two That's completed. All right. All right, now we've got our knockouts. We went ahead and prepped those. Now you could, you, if you mounted the box and decided you wanted to knock out or make some kind of adjustment later, you could definitely do that. It's not the end of the world. I just like to do them prior to mounting the box. And what we're gonna do here is just try to find us a kind of a happy, location for how high and then to the right and left that we want to mount this box it's going to be pretty close right back to where it was um, in this particular application just making sure that these are all going to be long enough and i think we're good probably somewhere right around there bobby is yep. where we'll i got you we'll mount it So I put one screw in the bottom and we're just going to level, level that up. Really those two screws would be sufficient, but We've got a few more fasteners here, so we'll just... All right, now that we've got the box completely in place, uh, what I failed to do, Bobby, I think I did not take the... Um, I did not take the lock rings. Oh, the lock nuts out of here in uh, just a yeah. moment. So yeah, you try to want, you want to retain the original uh, lock rings from here. Try not to drop them in the water because <clears throat> you will have to reuse them to connect the uh, wires back to our box. And for some reason, you do lose one. You can find them in any Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, any electrical supply. So he's talking very, about very, some of very common part. Yep. So right here for the installer guys, you may want to grab a couple of these just in case. All right. 
So what we're gonna do is begin, we're gonna be pulling these wires through. So the one big kind of just takeaway and, you know, initial observation looking at this is there's a lot less, there's a lot less wires, a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but not kind of, you know, the other box that we just took off. It's uh, it's definitely a little you less intimidating. Little there's only so many clear. places to, to connect wires. And what I'm doing, I'm just feeding that, that liquid tight connector through the bottom of the box, the knockouts that we, that we were planning to use. And I'm tightening. Tightening those down. And I'm just gonna work my way from right to left, uh, installing these wires. Okay, so this is a motor wire. Yeah, that's a motor wire. And then this one here that we're pulling in, this is a motor wire. <clears throat> now, sometimes you may not have enough wire. Yeah. So you can yeah. obviously add some wire when you go to connect yeah. the motor and connectors. More than likely, looking at this one, Bobby, we're going to have to. We might be we're going to have to do that. This. Yeah. Now, do you have enough room to stick that in a different knockout potentially? Maybe. I if if I uh, if I if I wanted to, it it's I probably could make it work. Um, but I think for this to be as clean as it can be, my personal opinion, um, it would just better to make a connection here at these wires. So what we're talking about is these motor wires. They're eventually going to go into the motor terminals here. They're really really close, and we might be able to make this work. Um, However, we may have to add and just simply make a splice here with a wire nut, adding a small length of wire to lengthen these so that we can connect them to the motor terminals. We know that this wire here, these are plenty long enough to get to the motor terminals. And sometimes what you'll find is you'll have a little extra wire that's still down in the conduit. I just pulled just a little bit there. I probably got another half an inch. So, oh, yeah. so I think we're probably gonna be okay. Perfect. In this installation. So finally, we've got our uh, we've got our power wires coming through, and this is the last high voltage wires that we have. I'll tell you what, you know, sometimes you you do things and think that's the best way to do it, and sometimes you decide that hey, it would be better off done a different way, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm actually going to move. I'm going to move this connector. I'm going to move this motor to the front. Because what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to bring the power in the back. Once again, this is all just for aesthetics reason, just trying to make the install itself when everything's put back together as clean as possible. All right, and then we're gonna pull our motor, motor wire back through. Just keeps some strain and gives the uh, the flex conduit that's coming in a little little more relief on the bottom of the box. And then finally, we've got our limit switch wires. Now these, what we were kind of mentioning earlier about the wires not being long enough, um, these are probably not going to be long enough, and that's okay. We will show you how to fix that. All right, 
There we go. All right, Bobby, we've got, we've got all the wires in here. We've got, once again, just the same, just to repeat, these are our limit switch wires. We've got motor one, we've got motor two, and then we've got our power coming in on these, on these three wires. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by hooking, hooking our power up first. I'm just gonna twist, since this is stranded wire, and it's kind of a little bit different if you're using stranded or solid. This is number 10, typically good for 30 amps. Those scenarios. And what I'm doing is just kind of just kind of twisting these back together a little bit. Before the connection method, it was under a uh, under a lug, so when that happens, they kind of get squished, kind of bent out a little bit. The terminals in the Premier remote for our power incoming power, it's on the power block, and inside of this, there's a spring clamp that holds that holds each that holds each wire. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat here a minute. I'm gonna take the, the screwdriver that we had provided. And starting from the bottom, just to kind of notate these, if you look on the board, it's labeled here as well. But we've got L1 on the bottom, L2 second from the bottom. And if we go one, two, three, we have our neutral. And then one, two, three, fourth, the very last one on the top is our ground. And we can start from the top or the bottom. Um, doesn't matter, I'm probably gonna I'm probably going to start with our, our grounds. I'm just moving the wire, just trying to make them. And what, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to cheat and just press just a little bit inside of there just to relax that spring clamp because this is stranded wire. If it was solid wire, I could actually just push it straight in the spring clamp. But since it's not, the, the solid or the stranded wire is not quite as strong as if it were solid. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to cheat that spring a little bit. I'm going to insert my ground and I'm just gonna pull my screwdriver back out. Now, when it's under that spring clamp, when I pull on it, it's not going anywhere. You can see I'm pulling hard enough, it's actually moving the, the terminal itself. And we're just gonna repeat that step. Sometimes it may, you know, you may have to put a little spin or a little force into that spring clamp, but don't be scared to press it all the way or you won't get another good connection. Uh, we've seen in the past people trying to install the wire into the spring clamp push it, the wire goes on the left and no wire goes on the right, just to make a note. All right, so there we go. It's just that simple. There's all of our power wires connected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll these out of the way just a little bit, just to, just to clean that up just a hair. And you can zip tie them if you want to get real clean, but we're just trying to get them out of the way. Yeah, just trying to get them out of the way. Absolutely. All right, so we're back to we're back to our motor wires here, and what we got this is a, a two motor lift for install in the installation video. We we did use a four motor box um, just to show you that it, it can be done this way. Now um, you can use our original tool that we provide to unscrew yeah. the left and the right side of these blocks, and they'll come out with a little bit of uh, leverage, but um, he's using a separate tool to just make it faster. All right, next thing I want to do here, these wires are a little bit long, um, you know, for, for my liking for the application. When you look in the little terminal blocks, you probably only need um, about 3 16 of an inch of the copper showing to land in the terminals. So what I'm going to do on all of these, I'm just going to twist them together and get a good good bond on all the stranded pieces and then I'm just going to trim them just ever so slightly so that they fit in the connectors especially with a stranded wire sometimes you can get a stray and what you don't want you don't want a stray wire from the black touching an orange or or um, or another color it just it will it would cause a spark uh, you don't want that to happen and we're just gonna, like I said, we're gonna trim all these just a hair. It'll make it not only a little better connection in the, the connection itself, but it'll also just keep everything looking a little cleaner. And if you see, I trimmed all those off. You notice I didn't do the white. I mentioned earlier um, that even though we had a neutral present, 
Uh, this is wire 240. The motors themselves, they're not using this neutral. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take a wire nut for now and I'm gonna cap this off because it's not being used. And we can really, we could jump right over to our other motor and just go ahead and do that, that same thing just so we don't forget to do it. All right, we're getting close. All right, so if we look on the bottom of the board here, we've actually got um, some labels right below the motor connector. You'll see L1, L2, uh, direction one, direction two, and then a ground. You will only use a direction one and the direction two if you're using um, the white wire, if you actually need that fifth wire. Today, because it's 240, we're only using a, the black, which is the first one. Orange is our second one. And then we can choose either direction one or direction two if we want a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction for the motor. Um, today, I just know that from, from experience and do it, we're actually gonna select and use um, direction two. So, and then put our ground in the last one. So ultimately what we'll have, we'll have black in the first, first pin, we'll have orange in the second pin, we'll have a blank in the middle pin, we'll have our red in the fourth pin, and then the green on the, on the fifth pin. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. What I'm doing here is just loosening the screws on the bottom of the connector. And I'm notating the orientation that this plugs back into the board. And loosen there. Loosen here. And we're just gonna start from, from left to right. And I know that my, my first one is my black wire, which represents L1 for the motor. wire it is representing l2 and keep in mind you could come across a motor that that's wired totally different I and mean, this is just the conventional colors for a motor um, electricity does not care what color the wire is that it's traveling in um, so you could see i mean i've seen motor wires you know of combinations of blues and yellows and purples and and whatever else but if you notate you know a, a previous control unit such as the gem that was here, what colors it was connected to. All the manufacturers, they typically, we use the, the standard traditional colors, which are the black, orange, and red. So we, as mentioned, we're gonna put the red in the fourth connector. And then finally, we'll land our green in the last bin. And if you see, when, it, when I was mentioning kind of the importance of kind of trimming that wire back to 3 sixteenths of an inch. Really what I was trying to get on my finish of my end product, I didn't really want to have a bunch of stragglers or strays or any loose copper wire kind of poking out of the top of the connector here. And do you want to go through the red wire and why we went on uh, that side just yet? Um, I can. Um, honestly, Bobby, it's just a... Um, just a gut feeling. I've, I've learned that most of the time uh, people, if they're measuring or wiring a T-motor, they're gonna tie their two, five, and three together, which gives us um, the rotational requirements for that, um, kind of indicates that we're gonna put our wire in, in, the fourth, in the fourth hole. If for some reason, the easy thing, the good thing about the Premier Remote, if you were to start the remote and the motor were to go the opposite direction, instead of having to rewire the motor or instead of having to swap two wires, L1 and L2, for example, you just have the option to just move the red wire one terminal over. So if you don't like the direction it's going and here we've got it put in direction two, just move it over to direction so one. So yeah, if once we get this connected and, and we see that motor one is going up instead of down, we would simply just move that red wire here That's right. over to the empty slot. And That's the same right. on uh, two if it's doing that. That's correct. We should be good. <clears throat> and just repeating that exact same format of steps that we did on the other motor. This doesn't take long at all. That's a grand trimming those to about three sixteenths of an inch. And we're going to get 
our connector. I'm going to loosen up our, our lugs. the exact same way. We're going to put it black in the first one. And we're going to do orange in the second one. And do red in direction two. over. We're going to plug it into to motor two. There are set screws on uh, the right and left hand side of the of the terminal. I'm just going to tighten those down a little bit. And then now we're kind of at the last step which is to connect our limit switch wire. Now we know that Know that the limit switch wire is not long enough so what i'm going to need to do is i'm going to need to get i'm going to get a little bit of length of wire here and we'll connect this and just take just a few minutes all right so we're back i've got a uh, got some wire here and what we're going to do we're going to extend our limit switch wires i went back to the traditional standard colors for the limit switch which is using our our black for our common and then we've got a a blue or a red that are controlling our, our up or our down limit depending on how someone had wired it before so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to strip a little bit of this wire back and i'm going to go ahead and trim those a little too long remember i, I really like three sixteenths of an inch and i pulled the plug i guess i should have sewed this before a little limit switch plug it's right here at the top of the board and i just simply reached up here pulled it out it's got the same kind of connectors as what's on the other one um, i'm going to notate the orientation of this the black our common is going to go in the center and normally what you would be doing is you would be taking the wires directly from here you know and really kind of working this plug kind of in this general area uh, i'm going to put my red and which is controlling in this case my my down limit and i'm going to put my blue so here. red black blue from left red. to right yeah that's typically what we see um that probably covers 90 percent i've seen some depending if limit switch has been replaced worked on it, it could be the other way um totally totally possible so I've got this hooked in. Keep in mind, I mean, normally you would have these sets of wires that would actually be coming up from the bottom of your box. You would do this, you would plug it in, and you would be done. Um, this is a little different only because we're having to extend these wires. So, you know, I secured these wires. Just adding a little extra length here. What I'm going to do is trim these back. Once again, just to remind everybody, power is completely off. Everything is just de-energized in this box. Before, you know, I kind of made it a note like, hey, let's really pay attention to what colors were used for what. So we had black to black, and I'm going to twist these with my hands first. So it's all stranded wire. Not that easy if it was solid, but typically all your limit switch control wires is going to be stranded. And then we had green to blue. wire nut and secure these together and then finally we got our white to our red I 
there you go. All right, we've got everything in here connected. I'm gonna push this out of the way. Typically, if I make any any connections with wire nuts inside the boxes, I kind of always like to point my wire nuts up just in case we get any kind of moisture or whatever it doesn't set in there. Um, this kind of helps that connection and longevity over the years. And we're kind of we're good. We're good to go. We're ready. At, we're at a point now where we can power our box back on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach back over to the uh, sub panel. We're going to turn our breaker back on. And if you look in there, or initially we're going to see some lights. Most importantly, this one that's on the left-hand side, we're going to see it blinking yellow, kind of a green color. It's just its, it's startup procedure. Now we've got an option here. Um, you know, really the next step is how, how do we... How do we really get this box set up compared to the Wi-Fi? I kind of just want to show you how fast that is. Okay, so basically the box has power now and you can see it's looking for a signal or ready to connect. Basically this box is emitting a Wi-Fi signal which on any phone, any device or any computer, we're gonna connect the device to the Wi-Fi that's being emitted out of here and then the phone will connect it to the homeowner's Wi-Fi. So basically we start out by trying to find the serial number of this box. And uh, we have ours covered over because it's a true homeowner installation. But if you look on the Wi-Fi, you'll see our Wi-Fi to the box is somewhere on here. It is. There it is. Okay, so Premiere yeah, we remotes. just turned it on. So it just, yeah, it just takes just a few seconds for that, that Wi-Fi. And you'll, yeah, you're like, just like you said, there's Premiere remotes, serial number is 0152. Um, you see that the strongest network to us is Rooster Coop, which just so happens to be the network uh, for the house and the residence that we're at today. Yep. So, and that's important in just a moment. So we're gonna select Premier Remotes. The serial number for your box is gonna be serial. Lowercase serial, and then the four digit number, which will be 0152. Now what just happened is our box or our phone is now connected to the box. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up a Wi-Fi connectivity page. You wanna hit the three dots on the right to bring down the menu, and then you're gonna to wanna to hit configure new AP. Now sometimes you might have to wait a second, so be patient. You're gonna see these green bars, which basically shows you all the available networks. You know, So you got Rooster Coop, which is the one we're gonna to connect to. It's the best 100%, then you got you know, the Wingate house, you got Roberts. These are all neighbors' houses um, that, you know, are available. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Rooster Coop and we're gonna enter in the password that is uh, available. So I, I, we're gonna take it away for a second so we don't give out away the, the customer's um, password. So go ahead and enter it. So he's entering in. All right, I've got the password in. He's entering the password now, and so he's gonna hit apply. Hopefully I entered the password correctly. If you don't yeah, do you have that, to be very... Uh, it all has to be right, username and password. Correct. And I did not. Okay, so we'll just try it again. It's the first one here, not the number. Oh, well, I definitely Okay, yeah, the so we one. just accidentally, and this is, this is the kind of stuff that will happen, so don't, get frustrated make sure you have the right password with the right characters and the right capitalizations take your time you know we have fat fingers too all right okay, i think i did so it right now he's time. got the right password all right put it we're in we're gonna apply. apply yeah definitely hit the and other so password for you'll see network. this looking it should say successful and now we're watching for this blue light see it already switched so this light was pulsing yellow or white or green, whatever it was, and now it's blue. So that means that this box is now connected to the homeowner's Wi-Fi indefinitely uh, until you know the customer changes his password or anything like that. Our box is automatically set up to always look for that Wi-Fi, and we'll, we'll show you that later when we have the faceplate. Um, so basically, we connected the box to Wi-Fi, and uh, he's going to go ahead and put the faceplate on. Yep, and what we're going to do, we're just going to take the ribbon here. There's a 
there's a little outlet. Now before before we hold on before we put the faceplate on, we have the serial number and the QR code covered up right now. What you're gonna do in this next video, so be sure to look at the next video of how to connect this box to a customer or to your app on the phone. So right now we're just gonna show you how the faceplate connects so we can complete this video of how to install and really the box. I, I should say the best practice and what i almost did right there bobby was was almost plugged in the faceplate with the board energized best practice is to have the board de-energized just so that we don't short a wire or short one of the pins actually so on the ribbon the breaker i'm going to turn the breaker off i'm going to take the end of the cord i'm going to seat it in the plug notice we've got the little shiny side facing right blue side facing left if you put it in backwards worst thing that's going to happen is just not going to work it just won't do anything it won't respond so we're going to seat that we're going to push it all the way in i'm going to cycle the breaker back on just to verify what we're going to see is lots of different colors going on here on the front panel most notably this wi-fi boom it's searching for wi-fi just that i don't know three four seconds whatever that was it's connected back and it's giving us some feedback right here from the panel we know that the up being uh, green, we already know that that means and indicates that the lift is on the upper limit. And in, uh, in this configuration or this format, hitting the up button, it's not gonna do anything. It's on the upper limit. It will not allow the remote to go up anymore, or the lift to go up anymore. And I'll show you that in just a second. I'm just gonna get these in here real quick. done just finishing up installing the front panel all right so as I said you know in this configuration we know that hitting the up button it's not going to do anything the limit is on the uh, it's on the upper limit it's not going to allow the lift to go down uh, or up rather so the only direction I can go down I know that because it's blue so if I press and hold blue is going to go down and if I release this button it's going to stop same thing if I were to double tap this button that's when it really goes into the auto run feature you'll see that we went down far enough that the limit has now came off of the upper limit so it's given us this feedback back to the user that we can go up or down and just so I can put this lift back in the position for the customer I'm going to double tap up the lifts going up and what we're going to see, just as soon as it hits the upper limit, that up light, it's going to turn green again. So we didn't go very far down, so it's going to come back on in just a second. There we have it. That's the installation of a Premier Remote, swapping out from a GR2A to a Premier Remote. It really only takes about 30, maybe 40 minutes. Straightforward. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.